in November of 2008, I faced the greatest challenge to my life philosophies. Whatever life threw my way, I always found a gem. There was always something to learn, something priceless to take away. During the 14 years of the ever-changing diagnosis of an unknown autoimmune illness, I ran two companies, authored a creative series of books, and I tried to inspire everyone to be the artists of their lives. If you couldn't use the regular road to get to your dreams, you built one. So I was doing, I just wasn't getting any better. And I found a new path, meditation. And oddly enough, I found myself on my way to India. Incredible colors and fragrances, blissful meditations, every day a gift. And then one night, in one moment, two terrorists entered the restaurant and under a blazing blanket of bullets, nothing would ever be the same. After a momentary silence, I took a breath and the shooting began again. Only the gunfire wasn't moving away, it was coming closer. So I waited as they made our way to their table. A machine gun bullet seared its way through nearly one third of my body. Two of my friends were murdered. The darkest part of humanity played out right in front of my eyes. So what could I possibly, possibly bring out of this moment? What was the gem? What was the gem? It was choice. I got to choose whether to bring love or hate out of that room. And I chose love. I chose peace. And I didn't have to share what I saw, but if this was a view of our future, I needed to help people change their view, their voice, their choices, and to make peace the response to any challenge. You see, peace keeps everything in a manageable scale. It helps you observe your response and not erratically react. It keeps you in the calm through the chaos. And so as soon as I could stand, I began teaching peace, and I started the Peace Dragon. 30,000 students later, and a couple years, 2015 would be my stellar year. Returning to Japan, heading to China, Benin, Mexico, and here's the one I love, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> right? Everybody just Kuala Lumpur, oh. right? It has that flaz, and I just had one thing left to do before, my yearly physical. And you know what's coming here, the news. But here's the question and the gem. My unpacked bags from Japan were proof of the unbelievable 10-hour days and amazing exchanges with teachers and students. So what was the difference between the day I didn't know and the day I found out I had cancer? Nothing. Nothing unless I empowered it to be. I had choices to make, not fun ones, but choices. And I had peace to hold it in perspective. Whether the terrorist comes from within or without, the choice is ours to be the victim or the victor. We can choose to carry the trash or the treasure. And I can see here, we're not the trashy kind. <laughs> so what do you do when you're going to lose your boobs? You hold a farewell bash. I held a queen of her hearts off with her boobs party, and I demanded everyone get their mammograms. I would drag their butts in and do it. And they listened. One friend shared that upon my urging, they found her cancer early. And before I lost my hair, my amazing hairdresser cut a peace dragon on my head. I sewed baby peace dragons for children undergoing similar challenges. I posted bald lessons. We don't know how to be bald. And yes, I did scream when the unfamiliar reflection in the mirror was not Mr. Clean, but me. <laughs> and I did scare the bajinkies out of my cats and dogs. And when I lost my eyebrows in their place, I painted and posted a fish and a fishing pole, a caterpillar complete with googly eyes and a half-eaten leaf. 
People forwarded these posts to encourage and comfort because jewels, they're for sharing. And there were very personal gems for me. When I faced an unrelenting week of excruciating pain <laughs> from an allergic reaction to the anti-nausea medicine, my incredible and caring nurses told me that it would subside in a week. And I sobbed, not because of my pain, but for those who suffer from every kind of pain and don't have someone to take their hands and walk them away from this very dark precipice and whisper kindly, hold on, you'll get through this. We can take people's hands. And when I lost my hair, the young girl at the register turned her body completely away from me. Again, I cried, not for me, but for those that are invisible, those who wish to be seen and loved. I was given the grace to walk the path that I so often speak of while teaching peace, the invisible. I felt the desolation, the isolation. We can help people keep visible. We can help ourselves keep visible. Jewels. <laughs> We're all jewel genies, and with any challenge, we have the ability to help ourselves by finding our peace, our gems, and to shine. And then we can help others find their jewels. We can take away their trash bags and give them a treasure chest. No matter what the challenge, find the treasure. Every breath is worth giving it your all, because no matter what you're going through, there are gems. It's your choice to find them or leave them undiscovered. And sometimes, sometimes you just have to dig a little deeper. It is never about the way we're going to die. It is always about the way we choose to live. Peace in. Thank you.